Gig Gab, the show for working musicians, episode 244 for Monday, February 17th, 2020. folks and welcome back to gig gab the show that's by for and about working musicians here in durham new hampshire back in durham new hampshire for a couple of days i'm dave hamilton here stuffed up but powering through in san jose california it's paul kent yeah as i was saying in pre-show uh, this is one of the very few times when i am not sad we're not in the same room doing this show together so uh yeah yeah yeah. No, I would get you. No, I would definitely get you sick if we were together right that's now. So that's uh, see, and that's the beauty of this is we can all do this, and you don't get any of us sick. That's like it's it's good. That's good. I did four gigs this weekend with this clogged up nose, and the interesting thing is, oh. my throat is fine. Yeah, you know. So and I warmed up really like most of the gigs I had to drive to. I did a really good warm up, and my throat is fine. But there's just that whole you know no resonance and and uh, you know just waiting to leak out of your you know frontal lobes there yeah. that uh, just makes singing a real hassle so it was interesting though because again you know I, as i say many times not a trained singer but i'm a really determined student of singing and thinking about things like warm-ups and technique and all those types of stuff you know when you have a little bit of knowledge as to what's going on with muscle control when you're a singer, it goes a long way to you not wrecking something, right? And when you're sick, you can wreck something because, you know, the, the, the uneducated might choose to just try to power through and powering through is often not the best thing, especially when you're, when you're sick. It's never, it rarely is powering through the best thing. Yeah. Yeah. It, I'm it, amazed at those guys though, you know, the death metal guys and the screamo guys, you know, how do you do that? I, I mean, I just don't understand the physics the you know the the physicality of having you know voice systems that allow you to do that on a regular basis. I, I I don't either, but I know that they're not actually like screaming like you and I would be screaming if we were making that noise with our with our voices, right? Like you look at a guy like like Sammy Hagar, right? And and even like Dave Grohl, he doesn't quite have the voice that Sammy Hagar has, but Dave Grohl can, can go scream for three hours at a show and be yeah. totally fine as can Sammy. But those guys, like, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't think they were coached how to do it. I think they just figured it out on their own, but, yeah. but I, I think there is a technique involved in singing like that, that, that allows you to protect your throat. It probably requires very, very strong throat muscles to, to, keep your vocal cords sort of contained as opposed to just letting them blow loose. And, and then that's the end of that. So well, that that's the thing. Singing is really kind of muscular control, right? Totally. It's, it's really, yeah. that's what it is. And so um, anyway, you know, I had four straight today. Uh, the second one, the uh, three solo and the, the second of the four was a house rocker gig. But other than that, I had to sing three hour shows on Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, and uh Got through them, you know, it's kind of nasal sounding. And every yeah. once in a while, something would drip onto my vocal cords and, you know, I'd have to cough or you something have to like cough that. it but, out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 But uh, if anybody yeah, out so. there, I'm curious about this now, if anybody out there either is a vocal coach or has been to a vocal coach or simply knows the mechanics of what that takes, I would love to hear from you. Feedback at giggabpodcast.com. Really, we'd love to hear from you about anything, but but that in particular is, a, you know, in the moment curiosity here. So we'd love to. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I wanted yeah. to talk a little bit about AB5 and a little bit of follow up from that conversation. Yeah, it was man. a great conversation. Yeah. So, you know, as time is going by. Well, let's um, let's I, I mean, I, 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 because I'm guilty of this all the time, too. AB5 being the thing we talked about in, I believe, the last ep two episodes ago. Uh, right. Which is the new bill in California that law, not bill. Sorry, law. law, right. Bill that was signed into law that uh, that requires all most contractors to be treated like employees. And, and the reason we talked about it here is because on paper, it 
potentially means that musicians can no longer be contractors. In most cases, they have to be employees. So, so that's the background. You can go back to listen to 242. I'll put a uh, gig up 242. I'll put a link in the show notes so that you can hear the background conversation. Okay. Now. Yeah. So this, this law exists. And as we shared a couple episodes ago, there's all sorts of efforts from all sorts of interested parties to get it repealed, get it amended, get it rewritten, get these things called uh, exemptions or carve outs for different types of um, professions, musicians being an active one of those. But it, 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 bottom line is the law exists. There was hope that it would be taken care of quickly. That hope is turning to fear very quickly here in California. And I should add hmm. that a version of this type of law actually passed the United States House of Representatives recently. They say it has little to no chance of passing the Senate or, the, or getting a president signed into national law, yeah. federal law. But um, these things happen, you know, around the country from time to time as, as you know, union interests and workers' rights interests raise their heads, um, you know, these types of things happen. It's generally considered in California, certainly by the independent contractor com community, that it's a bad law, that it was way too glossingly generic, creates so many problems. And there's a lot of really upset people. And right now, very soon, something has to happen. Because other than that, everybody, every musician I know, every band I know is sitting assuming it's going to get it's going to get um, repealed or, or changed or something like that. They're, they're hoping upon hope that that's what's going to happen. Yeah. Right? Hope, hope usually isn't the thing that that changes well, laws. There you go. Right? Well, and they're also, you know, writing letters, calling assemblymen, doing a lot of things like that. Sure. And so, yeah. So there's a lot of things going on. But anyway, it's coming to a time. And, and I had made a decision with my band that I would give it till the end of February. Right. And there's no you clear indication yeah. what's going to happen we're going to have to make some choices right now. Again, some people are, this law affects venues as well. Technically venues are supposed to consider musicians as employees. Every band. I have member. not had right. Every band member. It's, I have not had a single venue reach out to me and ask a question about this. So, so you I know, have a question though. I mean, it like it, certainly there are laws that are on the books that no one enforces. Usually they're old laws and we, you know, refer to them colloquially, 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 easy for me to say as blue laws, <laughs> right? Like those things that, oh, they used to matter, but now like, you know, OK, fine, whatever. Uh, but this is a new law. So my question is, is it being enforced anywhere? Right. Well, you like, won't know because no one has filed their first taxes yet. Right. So this is a well, but like our, a, our Uber and Lyft, have they changed their their policies and are their drivers now being paid as employees? I Like I realize this would be a, nobody. You know, very few people have. I'll, 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 let me talk to that for a second. So Uber and Lyft sued about this. Okay. They lost their first round of, of lawsuit. Um, and um, but I do not know that 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 uh, the contractors are now being turned into employees. I don't think okay. I don't think Uber and Lyft's business model would would you know, Support deal with that, that very well. But no. anyway, <laughs> if not at I all. just want to talk for a yeah. few seconds about my band and the unique sure. thing that, that I'm having. So one of the options is uh, me to put the guys on payroll. Now I have a, an LLC. I have a business entity. Yep. Um, so that's one step. Um, and then the second step would be putting them on payroll. Now in my band, one of my guys, he is an LLC. Right. He has incorporated or, you know, set up a you know, formal business structure sure. as an LLC. The other guys don't one or two because they teach during the day are considering it. But my point is that there's a few different um, approaches. So it is on my mind. And, and again, I've been sharing so much with the guys, letting them know this is coming. This is coming. This is coming. This is coming. We're going to have to have a talk with it by the end of February. So uh, at the Valentine's gig we just did, before the gig and during the break, I was talking to a couple of guys and kind of explaining to them, like, this is getting down to it. And at the end of the day, you know, I'm pretty exposed right now. Um, the penalty for misclassification of someone as an employee can be up to $25,000. I think I read somewhere it could be $25,000 per incident, yeah. but it's, you know, it's, it's a, theoretically it's a per paycheck, right? Like you could, or maybe even per gig. Yeah, it could be. My guess is that that you would not be made an example of in it at that severely. In fact, if if it looked like it was going there, you'd hire a, a you know powerful attorney and and make this thing go away. But because um, because then it's worth paying an attorney five grand to make fifty grand go away. You know, that's right. Um, 
Yeah, that's yeah. But yeah, this is fascinating to me because I, I, as I and I am no lawyer, I I've been known to play a pretty good hack lawyer and get myself on into, TV. Well, on podcasts mostly <laughs> uh, and get myself into a lot of trouble. But as I read it, your guy that is an LLC, I don't think you can treat him as an LLC if he's playing in your band in this way. Like, I don't. I don't think you get to do that as the law is currently written. Which Wait, explain is, what you're saying. So, okay. So uh, let's say I play in your band, right? Yeah. And I, and, and you say to me, Dave, I got to start paying you as an employee because of the law. Great. Okay. We've, we've had our discussions about AB five. We're both of the same, you know, understanding about this. Okay. Got it. And then I say, Hey, instead of paying me as an employee, I've formed an LLC, hire my LLC as the drummer, right? You know, that that would be that conversation. I don't think the way I've read this stuff, and I haven't read it all, so I could very much be wrong, but I don't think you and I get to make that arrangement. I think you have to treat me as an employee in that regard. Uh, interesting. Yeah. All right, I don't well, know. It's, 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 you know, it's, it's murky waters, but, but it's it, murky waters, but it is. Very, well, let, let me get to the heart of the, the yeah. weird thing that I'm, that I'm thinking about. So in this discussion, I'm trying to explain to the guys if I have to hire you as an employee, I have to have some kind of payroll service set up. There's a cost to that. Yep. There's an overhead cost to that. There is a, um, you know, there's disability insurance, social security matching, you know, unemployment. You know, there's there are costs now. Some of them are stuff that you will you pay anyway. You know, when you file your taxes, probably. And, but some of them are required that the employer matches some percentage of these things. So it's another cost. Yeah. Now, so now if, you're, that, if you're self-employed, the way that works is you are paying both your the taxes that you right. would own plus the taxes that an employer would have to pay in right. th in this. So that if you get paid 100 bucks for a gig, you're paying both sets of taxes, which means. Well, and, and so here's the point. Right. Let's just use a round number. The band gets paid a thousand bucks. There's 10 guys. It used to be, here's your hundred bucks at the end of the night. Thank you. Have a nice life. Right. Yep. That's the standard way that we all can relate to. Yep. Well, now I have one guy assuming his LLC argument holds up. He's like, well, why should I be dinged? You know, just pay me my hundred bucks. You know, why should I be have to, you know, I went to the cost of incorporating, you know, setting up this entity, and, um, you know, well, that, I pay my minimum tax in California. He, so he, he says, why should I be ding? All yeah, right. So, so he should get his hundred bucks if that argument. Well, holds up. well, well, yes. If that argument holds up. And now the other guy is at hundred bucks. It's not a hundred bucks really, because my cost to have you might be 120 bucks. Right. Right. So, so that 20 bucks, you know, for me to keep you playing as a musician, this is where it gets weird. Right. So am I, are they going to say, Hey dude, it's your business. You know, that's the cost of you having a business. Am I going to say, dude, we're just really transferring over the problem that I didn't cause with this law. And, um, you know, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to incur cost out of my pocket. Right. So because really, if, if you, if, if, if in a 10 person band, and of course this gets amplified even more so in a five person band, well, actually less so because you're splitting it more rather than less, but it, regardless, if you were to say, okay, I'll eat, your portion, you know, previously the portion of the the self-employment tax that you paid, which once you either you're either paying it as self-employment tax or you're pay, paying it as employer taxes. Right. Yeah. And so if you're now going to eat that now, they you've essentially given them twenty dollars that they don't have to pay to the government and you're taking that 20 out of your pocket. You're going to go every gig if you split that thousand bucks up. You're going to go in the hole for every gig. Right. So now what we, what we have to introduce is that a thousand dollar gig. Pick a number. Two hundred of it. Yep. Is overhead. Right. Taxes. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Taxes. Payroll and, service. And a, and a payroll service will run you yeah, maybe twenty five bucks a month total. But, right. but whatever it is, there's a yeah. number now. There's and a it's number not a thousand dollar gig. No, it's not. So do, does the guy who has the LLC, does he have to share in that overhead? He says no. You know, now and further, what makes it even worse is that hundred dollar gig is now 
we'll use that 20%. It's an $80 gig. That's right. And then your taxes are out and you know, you're walking out with 60 bucks or something like that. But it always was an $80 gig. I think that's the important part to remember is that there's not extra taxes. It wasn't a payroll service and there wasn't the, I I, I hear what you're saying. There always was. Is there any fair way to compensate? You know, now I have to go out and find unemployment insurance and go out and, you know, there there's, there's overhead in value. Yep. And now this thing that was a like, Oh, we got paid a thousand dollars. Here's your hundred dollars. Have a nice day. There's a lot more time and work. So, Absolutely. and again, the guys could say, not my problem. You wanted to own a band, own a band. I just play guitar here. Right. Th- they could say that. Right. But, they, but, but, but they could say that, but, but if that's the, if that's the line that someone were to take, and I realize that it's it's probably never this binary, right? Like it, there's always like, you know, no, there'll, there'll be there'll be 10 different opinions. There'll be this. mushy middle. Right. The whole thing of it. Right. But if the, if that's the line somebody wants to take just to make it easy, then you say, you're right. You're right. I do want to run a band. And this gig that I know last month we played it, but now it's different. This gig, you earn eighty dollars at the gig. It's not it. Instead of thinking about it as a thousand dollar gig. It's never been a thousand dollar gig for anybody except you. And then you've chosen right. to pay out 900 of that based on the simple math we went through earlier. Now you're choosing to pay out less of that and you have your reasons, to, you know, and that's fine. But if if they're not involved in the management of the band, then it doesn't matter. Then that's just yeah. how it is. It's yeah. your way or the highway. Now, I, I realize that's not how your band runs and probably most bands don't run that way, but the, some of well, them. Well, let me pause you because the point you're about to get to is actually the most important point of all this. This will wreak havoc with the kind of gentle fabric of unity that a band is, right? So A, if, if there's different situations in the band, and again, this LLC thing would be a different situation. One guy's getting his hundred bucks. One guy's getting 60 bucks you know, even though he's not really getting 60 bucks and even though, yeah, he's, you know, the hundred dollar guy is going to pay taxes in a different way. You know, it's just bands where there's a certain uniformity or implied or implicit fairness or equality is one of the things that makes it easy for everybody to one less thing for guys to pick at that, that makes them bitter. Now, hundred dollar gigs going home with 60. And I would think even though what you're saying makes a lot of sense, I think a lot of musicians will just, you know, look at their paycheck and say, what the hell? What happened? What just happened? That's what right. Happened? Yeah. yeah, because I I, and I don't necessarily condone this, but I do understand this. There are a lot of musicians that don't file taxes. Now, as 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 a band leader, you don't necessarily want to you certainly don't want to officially know the answer to that question. <laughs> um, yeah. Right. But but a lot of guys, it's like it, the, the, the difference between paying taxes and not paying taxes is also the difference between saying paying to their rent and not paying their rent. Right. So some people choose not to pay taxes. And those are the people that are impacted the most by this. Uh, Uh, In that sense. But but I want to offer a couple other scenarios, because thus far we've been talking about, you know, the the sort of, you know, band that has one leader, but that is truly a I organize everything and I effectively hire you, you know, three to nine people to play these gigs with me. Right. In whatever capacity that is. But let's let's dig into that for a second and then let's talk about the alternative. Digging into that. And again, I'm no lawyer. But with AB5, I don't even think you get the thousand bucks anymore. I think the club has to now pay each of your guys a hundred bucks on payroll as employees, because that's 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 if that. But if I have the LLC, I can invoice him. Can you for services? Uh, I think so. I think that's that's the protection. uh, I think that 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 is right. I think that. okay. your point about whether. Because I know there was some discussion about that not being able to happen anymore. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, but, but you're okay. So maybe there's that, maybe there's not. Now let's flip this on its head. Let's take a band like lots of bands out there that, that are, you know, they just, it's one for all and all for one and everybody does their job. And I don't want to call them not leader led because there's always leaders involved, but it's not a it, it's not one person's business that then goes and hires everybody else. Right. It's a band and the band itself is the business. Now, 
thus far, that band hasn't been an LLC. It hasn't, you know, somebody just collects the money at the end of the night and distributes it out. But the band right. is, is a de facto partnership. Yeah. What does that band do? Now that band either has to do, has to get each person on the payroll of the club and clubs are going to stop hiring bands. If that's yeah, the they case, won't do that. right. Yeah. Or that band as a, as a whole needs to uh, create an LLC and, uh, you know, and go through that expense, assuming that that path is is allowed via this law. I'm going to go ahead and guess that you're right. Even if the law is written poorly and doesn't actually allow that path, there's got to be some ability for you to be a service contractor that, you know, that that does this contracting. Uh, yeah. So, yes. Yeah, so this so adds- extracted even further, Dave. Yeah. So, so remember, we're just talking about a basic thing. You know, your band yeah. plays. Once a week, you know, basically they're they're there six hours a week. What if you have like a really busy band that plays three or four times a week and it is 40 hours a week? Are you required to provide benefits? Are you required to provide health insurance? No, you're Uh, not. And I'll stop you right there just because I know the answers to these questions. If you have less than 50 employees, all of that stuff that is, you know, quote unquote required is not required. All right. How about this? Yep. What happens if you have a disgruntled employee or you fire somebody and they don't like it? And now there's kind of an employment employer relationship. What type of labor law issues do you open up now? Well, they they get to file for unemployment for sure. Yeah. And they will win sexual harassment, all those kinds of terrible things that happen in employment relationships. Those could happen. Those could happen anyway. I mean, but not, but there's no legal recourse, really. If I fire a, my my bass player now, you know, when when it's a you know yeah. a pickup band, basically, right? But once he's an employee, there is a legal ramification. To mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Well, is California an at will employment state? Yeah, but it's also um, um, I think it'd be fair to say it leans it leans heavy towards you know wanting to support workers' rights in as gotcha. many ways as it can. Gotcha. Well, they. I mean. They they can't force you to rehire someone, but they can ding you for their unemployment if they decide that it is, you know, your if you didn't if you didn't document the well, this person was, you know, had three strikes and this, that. And we talked and and tried to remedy. Now you have to go to the overhead of doing it. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. HR sucks. Yeah. It's not just it's not just a payroll service thing. No. The risks and the, you know, are, are now much more complicated and it's mm-hmm. unfortunate. And you don't think about it that much when it's just, you know, at the end of the night, here's your hundred bucks. But now when you put some formal construct in place, it, it will change a lot of things, I think. And, I think you're, you know, yeah, I hadn't thought about that, but you're right. Even if it, even if the incidence of, you know, those HR problems just to, to, you know, put an umbrella over it. Even if the incidence of that is low, it changes the dynamic. It's like, well, wait a minute. Now we're now we're not just buddies splitting up the thousand bucks or the five hundred bucks or whatever it is at the end of the night. Now, you know, even if let's take a band like Fling. Right. And let's say that I decide, okay, you know, I've got an LLC already for my consulting business. Guys, let's just run it through that. There's no reason to reinvent the wheel here. We don't yeah. play often enough. You know, we play a couple gigs a month, whatever. Like, it's fine. I, there's no reason. So I do that. Now I'm, and, and perhaps we work out some equitable thing where I'm being compensated for the additional expenses that I'm incurring. Right. Okay, great. So everybody's on the same page with that. We, we swallow all that. But now I'm literally writing, signing those guys' paychecks. That changes the dynamic. Yeah. In some way, shape, or form. It's like, oh, did Dave, you know, pay the checks yet? It's not like we're just taking the cash at the end of the night and splitting it around. Oh, no, 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 no. Now we've got to go put that in the bank and we've got to chop it up the right way and let the payroll service, you know, file based on each person's W-2s and all of that stuff that most people listening to this show probably don't even care about, let alone have any knowledge about. It happens to be a hobby for me because I, I don't know, I like accounting. I have, I have weird, <laughs> I'm weird. weird. I know, <laughs> but, but it, like that, but that kind of, that's exactly what's going to happen. And now it's like, you know, if we played the gig on Saturday and then on Wednesday, I'm getting like this soft but passive aggressive but you know text from you know whatever our horn player saying hey man uh did you cut paychecks yet i kind of need you know yeah. and now there's that control relationship that didn't exist before didn't have to well, how exist. about this uh some drunk guy you know fell over the drums kit today my drums are broken fix you know 
you're the boss, you know, you got the gig, you didn't protect them. You're going to pay to, to fix my drums. Right. Because right now everybody's a contractor and can arguably be responsible for their own stuff. That, that And then do you, exist. do you have to set up employment contracts with people that say, you know, Oh yeah. You're bringing your own and then, gear. And then, yep. Yeah. Oh. So, Oh gosh, I hadn't yeah, even right. thought so about that. That groan is the groan you hear coming from California. I mean, that, that is up and down this coast of people going, what the heck is this whole thing mean? And so, huh. you know, we said it very, very specifically in things that are good for labor are not, evil by design no no that, um, like on the surface this ab5 seems like it's coming from a good place and it to be fair it probably was it's just bad badly implement poorly implemented yeah yeah so, hey we have anyway. a, we have a related question here from jonathan sort of i mean it it sort of dovetails in here and i think we've got enough time to to go through it he says um i have a question for you i own our trailer and 99% of our PA gear. He says um, most of our gigs, like 90% or more uh, and all our rehearsals, would you just use my PA um, and my trailer? He says, I recently just got hit with a $500 repair for the trailer and I didn't see it coming. Is it too much to ask for a small percentage from the shows to go to a kind of cushion band fund for replacement of speakers, subs, or even a mixer? If something was to go wrong, you know, I, I bought brand new high quality gear a little over a year ago. The warranty is about up and I can't take these surprise $500, you know, non-expected hits. Yeah. He says, you know, in his scenario, he's also the one that does all the bookings and the promo, but everybody has a say in song choices. They all take votes. So it's, it it's probably more of a democratic band than a leader led band, even though, you know, it, th this guy owns the gear and he's the one that does the booking, but it's, it seems like it's a democratic band. So, well, uh, and the way he's framed, it certainly supports that. Yeah. Well, there's a few things to think about here. Um, it's a great question. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a universal question, right? So, yeah. you know, if it, it's all about communication and agreement, tacit agreement. In my band, I started the band. I went out and found players. I replaced players as needed. I invested in PA equipment. I, um, um, I did all the booking. I did all the marketing. I did all the legal stuff. I did all the, you know, artwork, you know, all that stuff. Sure. I did it. And I didn't think it needed to be ever said that this was my band. There, you know, there was, you know, to, right. in, in general, the guys, you know. But I don't think Jonathan is seeing this as his band. I think no, he's no, no, no. seeing well, it my as point our is, band. Yeah. My point is, is that Jonathan put out a fair amount of money. Mm -hmm. Okay. Out of the goodness of his heart, you know, or or what? what is the reason that he put out the amount of money? The band needed it. If I leave the band, it goes with me. I mean, you know, he owns it and I will let the band use it for free. I guess that's a fairly common, you know, type of thing. But, you know, this concept that I mean, we'll think about the alternative. If if he doesn't have the 500 bucks and the band doesn't want to chip in the 500 bucks, there's no PA. It, no, it, can, no. Yeah. Unless do. somebody else has a PA, nobody's playing. Right. Yeah. So I think but but when when this became a question in my band about about, uh, you know, the, the validity of, of recovering costs or, you know, getting some kind of compensation for time. Right. That was a really contemptuous conversation. Right. You know, yeah. Yeah. If I was to say I put 10 to 20 hours a week every week. I don't I don't think that that would be. Right, hang on, hang on. We're getting on. We're getting in the weeds here. I want to get back to I want to actually answer Jonathan's question because we're we're kind of getting into a, a different type of scenario. Right. This is. This is most definitely a, you know, it's not a, a band that one person started, at least the way he's pre presenting it. It, it. At this point in time, nobody sees it as that. Right. It is. They are the band. And well, the he, reason that the reason that my, my point has some relevance is that the argument against it was that we all do what we can for the common good of the band. That was a perspective from someone coming out. Mm. You had the money and you could buy the equipment. So you do that. Yeah. We rehearse at my house, you know, and I don't charge for it. So I do that. 
and uh, that that's kind of my reaction is that in the in the absence of having the conversation where you where where it actually is known documented and, and you know clear i think the easiest answer to jonathan's question is of course you know you know if they want to say nope it's your equipment and when you leave you're going to take it um you know so it's up to you to maintain it i would question whether it's worth contributing the equipment to the cause why allow the wear and tear right it, you know well, let I, think the band, I think it's worth not having a tacit understanding i think it's worth having a very explicit understanding and and we've done this in fling and i've done it in other bands too where and it's morphed at times right you know at first it's like okay look here's the gear it's under warranty that's great and then We've I, and I've had it go a, a million different ways, but I've always had the conversation like, look, if we're each bringing an I've been in bands where, you know, somebody owns this part of the PA, somebody owns that part and it's all kind of good. But even there, we've had the conversation. OK, look, let's talk about this. Something's going to break at some point. And you know what? It doesn't really matter what it is. Something's going to break and it's going to break because of a fling gig or because of a, you know, uh, you know, when I was in triple play or knockoff, like the same kind of thing. It's going to break because of one of our gigs, not just because I'm using my own gear on the, you know, on the side or, you know, at another time, not on the side. It's my gear. But, you know, it's going to be OK because of a fling gig, something fell or something blew out or whatever. And so we've we've had that conversation. Of, OK, here's how it is. And there's no right or wrong way to do this. But I think you need to be very upfront at, before the problem happens, hopefully, and explicit about it. And one way I've I've done it and seen it done is, OK, look, it's my gear and I'm going to own it when the band ends, even if the band ends the day after we have something repaired. And because of that, I'll own 50 percent of the repair and then the band eats the other 50 percent. You know, that's one way to do it. Another way to and that's do just it, an exchange for the band having to rent a PA for every gig. That's it. And the, and the band's not putting paying anything, you know, in that scenario. That's the only thing. Right. It's like, OK. And and then other scenarios I've seen where the band it's just like, yep, you're going to own it, but we're using it. And so we're going to, you know, as a band split the repair Own the band will own the repair. So everybody, you know, chips in an equal amount. And then I've seen it where. You know, you you do a well, 10 percent of every gig goes to the PA rental for whoever it's coming from. And now that person is solely responsible for making sure that the stuff is, you know, repaired and at the gig and working. And in Fling, we've sort of dealt with it. We, we've gotten lucky. Um, we have had things break at the time that things have broken. We've sort of evaluated it and said, OK, yeah, you know, this is normal wear and tear. It's my gear. I'll fix it. Uh, other times it's been like, well, that was definitely because of, you know, us at this one particular gig. So the band's going to pay for it. And we started taking years ago, we started taking kind of the extra, like if it was too easy to divide up a gig, or if, it, if it wasn't easy to divide up a gig, we would like maybe take a hundred bucks off the top and, and just put that into, uh, into a, a, a drawer to be, you know, somewhere. Yep. Yep. And virtual drawer. Uh, well, no, actually, it's a real drawer, but a um, physical drawer. yeah, it's a physical drawer. We just put the money in there and then it's like, OK, how much money do we have in there? Oh, cool. OK, now we can either pay for some recording time, which we've done or, hey, you know, we've got extra money in there. Let's go out to dinner and like spend that money. But but it's also there for when, you know, gear breaks. And it's like, hey, man, you know, that speaker broke or that, you know, whatever isn't working anymore. And, and, and everybody will say, well, just take it out of the cold, hard cash. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, that's right. We've got that money. It's nobody's money, but it is the band's money. And we don't spend it without the band, you know, everybody's agreement. But it's way easier to spend that money that's just in a drawer that's no one's yeah. uh, as opposed to having to cough it up out of your pocket. So I recommend and, you know, when it gets to a point, I think with with fling once it once it hit about, I don't know, somewhere between three and five hundred bucks, it was like, OK, well, there's enough in that drawer. Like we don't we, we, we got to be careful. Now we'll take some out don't have of to do it every, every yeah, gig. now instead of putting it in after the gig to make the split easier, we might take some out of that after the gig to make the split easier. You know what I mean? And and, and those are great it. hacks for, for the yeah. democratically run bands. But yeah. I mean, now to tie this all these conversations together again, imagine if that 10 percent tacit agreement is now on top of having to payroll people, mm -hmm. right? You know, and yeah. all of a sudden you start seeing the true cost of running a business. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's something that's, 
really a, a great convenience to not have to think about. But when it's the real hard, you know, assessments of risk and, you know, what could happen and, you know, legal requirements, it gets hard. It's hard to just be a musician and, and, uh, and just show up and play and, you know, I, I, will say, bucks. I will say this. I still feel uh, th- the way that I always have, d- 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 not despite, but after all these discussions, after all this mental processing, I have always felt that owning shared gear as a band is a really, really dicey scenario. If your band is a full-time band and it is your business, it is the livelihood of all the musicians involved, then you're absolutely going to have shared gear, but you're also going to have, you're going to have a corporate entity at that point. You're all partners of it. You're going to have to come up with buy sell agreements as part of your operating agreement and all of the stuff that, you know, that you really don't want to have to think about, especially in a part-time band. But uh, other than a full-time scenario, I really think it's best to have no shared gear because when somebody leaves or something happens, it that's it's super ugly. And and if, if you're going to have shared gear, I think you really should have an, a, a full partnership or an LLC, you know, some some sort of entity where you right out of the gate, spell out all that buy sell stuff so that when someone leaves, it's like, OK, this is what happens to their share in the band. This is what you if 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 the you know, if it's a five person band, if the four of us are throwing you out, this is the way it works. If you are choosing to quit that's the way it works. Right. And there's two right. very different things and you can put it all together. As I like to say, anytime I join a, a business partnership, I always want to put in writing what divorce looks like, because that way you're doing it when everybody's friendly and happy and thinking about the future. And so there's no hard feelings, but when, if, and when that time comes, you get to look at it and say, okay, this is the agreement we all made. It's all in writing. It's all very clear. We were all clear about it back then. There's no surprises. Let's just deal with it and move on. So well yeah. said, man. Yeah. Boy, that's, um, gosh, I hope, I hope that you are able to avoid this. I hope we are all able to avoid this, this AB five mess that could exist. Crazy. Well, the, the flags people are waving is that this will destroy the, the music industry in California. Some of the things that are already being enforced are large recording studios are sending work out to Nashville, you know, cause they don't right. want to hire employees in California. So some of the people who are already erring on the side of caution of this, not assuming it's going to get repealed. And again, full repeal of a law is a pretty rare thing. Oh, you yeah. know, if I was to bet it's going to have some, some new language that's not going to be satisfying to everybody. I mean, oh. it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a baby step towards addressing concerns that have been read. And, you know, some of the um, thoughts are that even if they do, that stuff won't go into effect until 2021. So what we're going to all incorporate for, for nine months and then go back to our old, you know, way of working the, the, you know, the work will dry up by then. And, you know, industries will be, will be, will be wrecked and, it yeah. really is. It's a, it's a terrible, terrible mess. And it's yeah. an unfortunate and, thing. And even if you know that it's changing in 2021 or whatever, like, it, you know, your point about if that well, not one thing I know about employment law is if the law is clear, it doesn't matter what your arrangement is It with, with a, you know, a given person, be they a contract, you know, maybe it's they should be an employee, but you call them a contractor and you and that person are OK with it. That none of that matters. If something goes sideways and now that person, like you said, maybe gets hurt and sues you and says, you should have treated me as an employee and you didn't. And now I should have had you should have had workers comp insurance for me, but you didn't. And so now I'm suing you to because I slipped and fell while I was working for you. And, and, you know, this is what but I still wanted comp. the full hundred dollars of the, of but the thousand still, dollars. Of gig, course, right? I still wanted the full. I mean, yes. Right. Of course. I know. I know <sighs> it gets it. You know, that's the kind of thing is it's like, even if everybody's on the same page, if the law, everything's fine not, when everything's fine, it, that, that's, that's life. It. Right. Yeah, but as soon as, as soon as things are not fine, you really learn a lot about people and you learn a lot about, about situations. And you know, I think it gets back to what you said, you know, Money is changing hands. Unfortunately, the only way to protect yourself is a lot, a lot of clarity. 
That's it. And it needs you need to be explicit about it. Yeah. I, yeah. you know, we talk about this on my small business. Legally show. Legally defendable clarity. Yeah. We talk about this on my small business show a lot, but, but my, my co-host Shannon Jean uh, has, and I've, I've employed this idea many, many times. He has this idea of a working agreement that when he's going into partnership with someone new before drawing up the contract, they draw up this working agreement and, you know, many times just going through the working room, which which should be like one page bullet points. Here's what we're doing together. Here's the responsibilities I'm going to take. Here's the responsibilities you're going to take like that kind of thing. Just getting it on paper. Yeah. Very, very simple and clear. No legal language yet. You know, it can be the foundation of that legal language. But this is just two people or five people, whatever it is, like putting that on paper with your band might be the thing that even if it probably would hold up at some level in court, but even if it wouldn't might avoid you from ever even getting to that point, just because you're spelling it all out. And it's like, Oh yeah, there it is. You know? And some of the time in, in business partnerships, you do that working agreement by the time you're done, but before you're done writing it, the partnership has dissolved because you realize, ah, this isn't quite the thing I thought it was best, best to know now. Thanks a lot. Let's go have a beer, but let's not start a business. That kind of thing. So, yeah. Yeah, that's good. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. Feedback at giggabpodcast.com. That's where we uh, we want to hear your thoughts on all of this. I know it's crazy. We gotta, we gotta, I've, I've been doing some recording. I want to talk about that, but we'll do that next time. It'll be good. So more recording, not just the Bitter Pill stuff, but stuff here in the studio that, with drums. Cool. And yeah, 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 yeah. It's fun. That's all I got. You got anything else, man? No. Okay. Well, then that's Always the end. be performing. Always. I know. Even when it's tax time. Whatever. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> figure out how to enjoy taxes. I don't know how I did it. I don't recommend it. See you next week, man. Hope you feel better. Yeah, thanks.